House of Squibb presents Academy Awards. Every week, Squibb brings you Hollywood's finest. The great picture plays, the great actors and actresses, techniques and skills chosen from the honor roll of those who have won or been nominated for the famous Golden Oscar of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And now, E.R. Squibb and Sons, manufacturing chemist to the medical profession since 1858, bring you one of Hollywood's best-known stars, Eddie Bracken, in It Happened Tomorrow, the picture which was nominated for a 1944 Academy Award. With Mr. Bracken, you will also hear Miss Anne Blythe, who, as Best Supporting Actress of the Year, was nominated for the 1945 Academy Award. This is the story of something that couldn't happen, but did. And it happened around the turn of a century to a nice guy who was young and gay. His name was Larry, and he was a newspaper reporter. As a matter of fact, you can tell from the old prints that Larry looked an awful lot like Eddie Bracken. Acted like him, too, as you'll find out. Nobody believes my story, and I don't care if they don't. All I know is it happened to me. It happened tomorrow, and I'm still alive to tell about it. It began one night when we were horsing around in the city room of the newspaper where I worked. Mm, careful, Larry. You're not a full-fledged reporter yet. And if the boss catches you drinking beer with the boys, he's liable to change his mind about giving you a break. Oh, forget it, Pop. I'm going to sleep right now, right on top of these old newspapers of yours. You're lying right in the middle of 1843. Oh, good place, place to sleep, Pop. Oh, on a bed of ancient news. And be careful. I've been taking care of these files for nigh on 60 years. Nothing as dead as yesterday's newspapers, Pop. <laughs> You've got no imagination. News is what happens. What's the difference whether it happened 50 years ago or tomorrow? Uh, you mean will happen tomorrow? No. Time's only an illusion. Uh, uh, look here. Hmm? March 18, 1875. For the people then, this was the future, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But suppose we're all living on that day in 1875, and I arrive with this book. <laughs> I can tell you everything that will happen. Ah, bring me the one for the year we're living in now, Pop. You can name your own, own price. That's what I want. Tomorrow's newspaper. How much? No, Larry, no. Don't ever ask for a thing like that. Uh, if I knew where I could get tomorrow's paper, I'd give ten years of my life for it. How do you know you've got ten years? Me? You're kidding. I'm just about ready to sow my first wild oat. Well, if you're going to sow, come on and sow. Oh, we're out yeah. of beer and got tickets for the vaudeville show. What's playing? Eh, the great Professor Cigarini. He tells the secrets of the past, present, and future. Okay. Come along, Pop? No, I haven't time. Well, good night, then. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. I forgot about Pop and his newspaper tomorrow and went to see the professor. He was terrific, but the girl who worked in the act with him was tremendous. And it won't hurt the story now to tell you that she's married to me right now and always will be. And now, my friend, do you know the number which is engraved inside your watch? No, professor. Ah, but Miss Sylvia knows it. Miss Sylvia, what is the number of the watch? Two... Seven, nine. Oh, I can't, I can't. You can, you can. I compel you. Three, seven, five, ninety-four. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, Professor. <laughs> I didn't know this number myself. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, a question. Professor. I have a question, Professor. It's personal. It concerns a certain young lady. And you want to know if she will have the misfortune to marry you. Is that it? (laughs) (laughs) All I want to know is whether she's going to have lunch with me tomorrow. Will she come? Sylvia, one final question. Can you hear me, Sylvia? The gentleman would like to know if the girl he loves will have lunch with him tomorrow. Yes. She will. Oh, well, thank you, Miss Sylvia. Now, will you please she tell me... She is in a trance, sir. You will have to arrange with the young lady herself. I'd like to, but she can't hear me. You mean the young lady is deaf? No, she's in a trance. <laughs> <laughs> And that is the way the girl came into my life. I waited for her after the show, and in spite of her uncle, the great Cialini, I took her home in a horse cab. Then I took out on foot in a fog as thick as good stew. My head was in the clouds anyway, so it didn't matter. But then I heard a familiar voice. Larry. 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 Oh, who is it? Oh, it's you, Pop. I can't see you very well. What are you doing out so late? Didn't I tell you time doesn't exist? I I was waiting for you, Larry. For me? But I didn't tell you I was coming back. I'm just on my way home. So am I. But I wanted to give you this first. Hmm? Why, it's a copy of the evening news. I've already read it. <laughs> Maybe not. You'd better go home and sleep it off, Pop. Oh, I never felt so well in my life. Good night, Larry. Wait, wait. I'll take you home. Uh, No, thanks, my boy. We, uh, we go different ways. Okay. Uh, Don't lose that paper, son. Don't lose it. I thought he was a little tipsy, and I stuffed the paper in my pocket and went home and slept like a rock. But the next morning, when I came downstairs at the boarding house, a guy called Joe said, Hey, Larry. I'm still looking for a job. Can I take a peek at your newspaper? This one? Oh, it's last night's. Oh, I don't mind. It's just the one ads I'm after. Hey, this ain't last night's. It's today's. Oh, no, Joe. Today's evening news hasn't even gone to press yet. Must be last night's. Hey, what day's today? Wednesday. But this says Wednesday. What's all this? Wednesday. Hey, they must have made a mistake. Well, what do you know? It says it's going to snow. It didn't snow yesterday, did it? Nah. Hey, look out the window. It's snowing. Who ever heard of snow in May? I don't get it. Hey, here's something in the ads. Uh, they need a waiter at Beacon and Fifth. I guess I'll get right over there. Yeah. Hey, wait for me. I tell you, we don't need any waiters. But look, this paper says... We don't need any waiters, understand? Then why waste people's time by putting ads in a paper? You probably got the wrong address. Now, wait a minute. Here it is. You say you didn't put an ad in this paper for a waiter? No, we did not. I tell you, we don't need any waiters. Get out, Butterfingers. This is the last dish you'll break here. Hey, Maisie. Yes, boss? Get your hat on. Take a dollar from the till. Put an ad in the paper right away. Well, what are you staring at me for? In the morning paper? No, put it in the evening news. No. No. What do you want? Nothing, nothing. I, I'm just going down to the evening news myself. <laughs> Mr. Gordon, Mr. Gordon, I gotta find Pop. Something's happened I don't understand. When I tell you what's gonna happen if you're late again, you'll... <laughs> Mr. Gordon... Who's covering the Melba concert at the Opera House? Now, don't tell me you want to be a music critic. But if something happens there, front page story, the biggest news story of the day, I ought to be there before it happens. Are you crazy or drunk? Look, I'm going to show you something that'll change your mind. You're fired. You can't fire me. I quit. You quit? I mean, I'll quit tonight if you haven't given me a raise. A raise? Yes, sir, for the biggest news story of the day. Set up a four-column headline right now. Banded steel cash at Opera House while Melba sings. At ten minutes past two... I'm here, Mr. Stevens, for lunch. Sylvia! I really came to explain that my uncle is very angry and I won't be able to have lunch with you after all. Sylvia, come on. We're going to the Melba concert. Something's going to happen at the Opera House. We haven't got much time to get there. Come well, on. What's going to happen? Well, I, come on. I can't, I'll tell you on the way over. It's, it's my big chance. <laughs> Here you 
you are, sir. Um, two on the aisle. What time is it, please? Five past two. Overture's just started, sir. Oh, we're late. Oh, no, we're a few minutes early. Uh, say. Yes, sir? I'll bet you a pair of tickets I can guess how much you've taken in. $3,675. Oh, no, you lose, my friend. It's thirty-six seventy even. Oh, well, I guess I have to buy that pair. How much? Two fifty a piece, five dollars. Okay, yeah, fine. That makes it right. Thirty-six hundred and seventy-five. <laughs> Come with me, Sylvia. Hey, what goes on around here? How do you know so much? Tickets, please. Uh, we'll stand here. That's not permitted, sir. Well, um, we're leaving in a few minutes. But, Mr. Stevens, I don't want to leave in a few minutes. The show will be over. You mean Madame Melba? Oh, the big show isn't on the stage. It's out there in the lobby. Shh! Shh. Quiet, quiet. But what's going to happen? Oh, hold up. Oh, what kind of a story is that? A cab will stop out in front, three men will get out, and nobody will know who they are. They'll pretend to ask for tickets, then one man will take out a pistol and... Shh! Oh. Shh. Quiet, quiet. All right, I'll... Shh! But you just wait! Shh! Quiet, quiet, quiet. quiet. I told you so! It happened! It happened! I'm gonna be famous! I know what's gonna happen tomorrow! By certain signs, anyone can accurately predict a pleasant experience. Recall, for example, how often rain clouds forecast refreshment on sultry summer days. At the very sight of them, you can almost feel the welcome touch of cool, moist air against your cheek. You know refreshment is near. Another sign that forecasts refreshment is the name Squib on a tube of dental cream. For everything about Squib dental cream helps to make brushing your teeth not a daily chore, but a refreshing, exhilarating experience. Your whole mouth awakens to a frosty, minty tang, to brisk, tingling action you've never known before. You feel like smiling, and your smile is brighter. For there's a refreshing difference even in the polishing agent of Squib Dental Cream. It's so quick, safe, and effective. Find out for yourself tomorrow. Start brushing your teeth with Squib Dental Cream, one of the great family of Squib products. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. In a moment, we will bring you part two of It Happened Tomorrow. But first, we want to thank Arnold Pressburger Productions for making this story available. Arnold Pressburger is also the producer of A Scandal in Paris. And now, The House of Squibb presents part two of Academy Award, starring Eddie Bracken with Anne Blythe in It Happened Tomorrow. That's the way it was. Somehow those papers of Pop's kept getting into my overcoat pocket. Pop wasn't at the office since the night the whole thing started. But the papers for tomorrow kept coming up, and all I had to do was read them and see what was going to happen, copy the story out, give it to the city editor, and then go where it happened and phone it in. I got my raises. I got famous. I got my girl, too. But then I got a brilliant idea. Too brilliant. Oh, there Mr. you Gordon. are, Mr. Gordon. Uh, can I get an advance of $100? Why, certainly, Stevens, of course. I have some plans. Oh, not thinking of getting married, are you? Why not? Well, I can't understand why you have to borrow this money. After all, you seem to be able to tell what will happen before it happens, <laughs> and if <laughs> you wanted to, you could present your wife with a million dollars. Yeah? <laughs> How? Well, mind you, of course, I'm not an addict myself. <laughs> But with your superior endowment, I might be tempted to pick all five winners at the racetrack tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, of course. What did you say? Hey! Where's Pop? Anybody seen Pop? I gotta find Pop. I gotta find him. Why, 
Why, Larry, you still here? Not hanging around waiting for Pop, are you? Funny he doesn't show up. Well, he's been here so long, he's a privileged character. He's got a right to be drunk once in a while. It's not often. Drunk or sober, he's got to be somewhere. And if I were you, I'd turn out that light and go home. Good night. Good night. Oh, good night. Pop! Pop! Yes, Larry? Oh, Pop, I've been hunting high and low for you. Oh, now, don't look at me like that. I didn't thank you, Pop, because I didn't see you since. But I'm not going to ask you a lot of questions about how you do it. I'm mixed up in something I don't understand. But look, all I want is just one more paper. Then we'll call it quits. No, Larry. Oh, please, Pop, please. For the last time, I'll never ask you again. I'll never tell anybody how I got it. I, I just want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. It won't do you any good, Larry. Oh, but it will. It can make me rich. Then I can have everything I want in the world. Is it only money you want in this world? Oh, no, I've got everything else. I'm in love. Here, give me that paper, please. Give it to me. I'll, I'll be the happiest guy for the rest of my life. Are you sure, Larry? Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, thanks for giving it to me. You no, know, Larry, you grabbed it. Remember, Larry, I didn't give it to you. Come to think back on it, he didn't give me the paper. I grabbed it. And if I knew what was in that paper, well, anyway, I rushed right out to Sylvia. We decided to get married the next morning and spend the afternoon at the racetrack making our fortune. I could hardly sleep a wink that night and sat up marking down the five winners from Pop's paper. Lamp lighter, first race, uh, mudlock the second. Oh, boy, oh, boy, this is a cinch. <laughs> it's murder, that's what it is. What's this? What's this? Larry Stevens, evening news reporter, shot to death in a lobby at the St. George Hotel. At 6.25 p.m. today, just after the evening news had gone to press, Larry Stevens, its most valued reporter, sacrificed his life heroically in the line of duty. No. No. No! <laughs> I now pronounce you man and wife, and may God bless your union. Congratulations, Mr. Stevens. I'm glad to see you so serious. Marriage is a serious business. It's meant to last a lifetime. Thank you, Judge. I wish you years of health and happiness, and may all your troubles be little ones. <laughs> That'll be five dollars. <laughs> Say, um, can you draw up a will? Your will? Yes, sir. I want to leave everything I have to my wife. Kiss me, darling. You may not have me so long. Yes, darling, but hurry. We have to make the first race. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going home and go to bed until today is over with. Look, my friend, you've won the first three races. Now you want to bet this whole 10000 on Ramona? Right, to win. I'm afraid that'll have to be an even money bet, mister. I can get four to one in another tent. Well, you're a good customer. How about uh, three to one? Three to one? Okay. Why, you'll win $30,000 if Ramona wins. Yes, I know. Please, oh. don't talk like that. <laughs> This is a lot of money to bet on a horse, mister. I can't give you more than two to one on Black Flash. Okay. 30,000 to win on Black Flash. Don't you think you should put at least half of that money on some other horse? Oh, no, no. It's Black Flash. Hey, Shep, come here. Yeah? I've been in this business a long time, but I never heard of anyone picking four sure things in a row. Not without he's got things fixed. I'm going to do a little fixing myself, Jake. Diablo's going to win this time if he never runs another race. Darling Sylvia, 
you, darling? The paper was wrong. Oh, brother, it was wrong, wrong. Don't you see? I've got a chance to live. Why was it wrong? <laughs> it says Black Flash would win, and Diablo just won. Yahoo! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh. <laughs> the judges have the following yeah. official announcement to make. Oh. In the race which has just been run, yep. number seven, Diablo, <laughs> has been... Disqualified! No! Oh, wonderful! It was right after all. Oh, Larry, sixty thousand dollars. You'll be a wealthy widow, darling. I'm very happy. <laughs> Here, dear, you take the sixty thousand while I hail a carriage. Oh no, no! I'd be afraid to carry that much money. Oh no, you keep it. It'll be safer. I might lose it. What about me? Keep it, please. No, Larry, you take it. No, you take it. Somebody has to take it. Give me that one. I'll take it. Yeah, you take it. No, no, wait a haze. Come back here, police. Stop that man. Stop, thief. Stop, Wait, thief. Larry, he's got a gun. Oh. Oh, well, easy come, easy go. At least we don't have to go to the St. George Hotel. That we don't do. Or do we? I guess we do, dear. It, yeah. It said so in your paper. Yes, I know. That's where you're supposed to make me a, a widow. Yeah. Late again, Stevens. I'll give you just one more chance. I've got an assignment for you. I've got a tip that something big is going to break. Wait till I get the address. Never mind, Mr. Gordon. I know it. What? Where? St. George Hotel. St. George Hotel? No, 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 that's not it. Oh, here it is, here it is, other side of town. You mean you're not sending me to the St. George Hotel? No, I'm not. Now get out of here. <laughs> oh, you bet. Stevens. Yes, Mr. Gordon? I've changed my mind, Stevens. Forget no. that assignment I gave you. You're going to the St. George Hotel. Oh, what for? Oh, uh -huh, you can't fool me. <laughs> When you say something big is going to happen someplace, boy, it happens. Me and my big mouth. <laughs> Good luck. I'll start setting up a headline right now. Goodbye, Mr. Gordon. Goodbye forever. What time is it, darling? Twenty after six. Five more minutes. Five minutes. I wonder how it's going to happen. I wonder if I'll feel the pain. Larry. Huh? Larry, look, they're coming across the lobby. The you man are... who stole your wallet. That's the fellow. Hey, hey, stop, thief, stop. I'll get him this time, honey. Larry, look out. He's still got his gun. Well, I... Larry! Gordon, evening news. What? What's that? Stevens? Yes, yes, I sent him to the St. George Hotel myself a few minutes ago. No. No, he was on duty. That man is a hero. He knew something big was going to break there at the St. George. Hold the presses. We're getting out an extra. Take this down. Larry Stevens, evening news reporter, shot to death in the lobby of the St. George Hotel at 6.25 p.m. today. He sacrificed his life heroically in the line of duty. Where's my hat? I've got to get down there. Keep back now. Oh, my chin. What happened, officer? Oh, nothing, nothing. Some newspaper guy got killed, that's all. Who? Oh, what's his name? I don't know. Larry something. Uh, uh, Stevens, Stevens. Go on now, get going. Did you say Stevens? Stevens! You! Alive! Oh, Mr. Gordon, am I glad to see you. I, 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 I don't get it, though. I'm supposed to be... Mr. Gordon. Mr. Gordon, where's Pop? Ah, Pop died two days ago. Died two days ago? Yes, yeah, and, and Stevens, you're fired. Fired, fired, get me? After me getting out an extra with your obit, building you up as a hero for the evening news, what do you do? You, 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 you cross me up and walk around as healthy as a pig. But I... You, I... you, get away from me, you... Wait a minute, wait a minute, if you're not dead, who, who, who's this guy? Officer, officer, how did you identify this man? His wallet, Mr. Gordon, here, see? It says Larry Stevens in it, evening news. That's my wallet. 
The man who stole it at the racetrack, I get it now. I was chasing him. The cops got there first, and when he ran around the corner, boom, they shot him. Found my wallet. They thought he was me, see? Now I'm not dead. I'm alive. I'm alive. <laughs> Sylvia, honey, baby, congratulations. You're not a widow. <laughs> Such a night. Clouds and... Oh, it's chilly. Yeah. What are you looking so wistful at the sky for? Oh, I was just looking to see whether Pop was looking down at me with that funny look on his face. Are you sorry Pop gave you those papers? Nope. Oh, it's some wedding night. We haven't even got cab fare. I know it. And you know something else? I'm glad that poor guy did something with that money instead of leaving it in the wallet. I got something better. What? You. The future. And I'm not going to worry about what the future looks like. I'm going to just take it as it comes. I guess Pop was trying to teach you a lesson, Larry. Yeah. I guess he was, and he did. You know, I think I can almost see him up there now looking down at me. He's smiling. So long. Thanks a lot, Pop. Come on, honey. Sometimes important items in the news of today can be traced back to little-noticed events of yesterday. There's the story, for example, of a tiny bottle received at the House of Squibb six years ago. It was sent from England, and it contained the first living culture from which Squibb was to produce penicillin in enormous quantities. In dramatic contrast to that first tiny bottle are great tanks big as railroad cars in which penicillin mold is now grown at Squibb. Every tank holds 10,000 gallons of culture broth. After processing, however, the contents of each tank produce only enough penicillin powder to fill the palm of your hand. Yet millions of units of penicillin leave the House of Squibb every single day. Behind this outstanding production record is the same scientific testing and research that ensures the uniformity, purity, and efficacy of all Squibb products. Your doctor knows that any Squibb product he uses is just as reliable as medical science can make it. And you can be just as confident in using any of the simple, everyday health essentials that bear the name Squibb. So always ask for Squibb when you buy. Squibb, a name you can trust. Next Wednesday, another great picture. The House of Squibb will present Academy Award starring John Garfield in Blood on the Sun. Today's performance of It Happened Tomorrow was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Our producer-director is D. Engelbach. Eddie Bracken appeared by arrangement with the Texaco dealers, sponsors of the Eddie Bracken radio program. And Blythe appeared through the courtesy of Universal International Productions, who are now releasing Nunnally Johnson's The Dark Mirror, an international picture. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next Wednesday at the same time when you're invited to listen again to Academy Award, presented by the House of Squibb, a name you can trust. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.